So let me ask you comic book guys a question. Would you crack a 9.4 slab? <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to, or welcome back to, Hydra Collectibles, where we let our geek flag fly. So I've been collecting comics since I was a kid, but even before I knew what comics really were, my two favourite things were Spider-Man 1994 and Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Yeah, you heard me right, Hero. For whatever reason, we couldn't say the word ninja here in the UK. Both of these shows left a huge mark on me as a kid, and have impacted my life moving forward ever since. Honestly, it may sound weird to some when I say this, but these two shows taught me lifelong lessons that made me the man I am today. Anyway, what some of you may or may not know is that I have a small collection of Mirage Turtle comic books, and well, here they are. So kicking things off, I have a copy of Comics Journal issue number 89, and though not an official Turtles book, it is an early, if not the first, advertisement for the series. Here you can see an image of Leonardo and a small advertisement of what is to come from this now amazing series. Now I know this book isn't worth very much, but it's still a pretty cool piece to have in your collection. Next I have an issue 1 replica from Loot Crate, along with another from a hardback guidebook I purchased a few years ago. I then have a 4th print, a 5th print, and the deluxe 6th print of issue number 1. And these are all great, as they show different cover art of our 4 favourite heroes. I then have an issue 2 second print, which is the first appearance of April O'Neil, Baxter Stockman and his mousers, as well as the third print, which features April on the cover. Moving along, I have an issue 3, first print and second, and this second print is a particular favourite of mine, as Splinter is my favourite character from the series. I have a Raphael 1, one shot, again in both first and second print, issue 4, first and second print, and Fugitoid 1. Now, Fugitoid, though not strictly a Turtles book, is still a very important character within the franchise, and his story very quickly crosses over with that of our four Turtles. I have issue number 5, first and second print, issue number 6, first and second print, Issue number 7, first and second print, and the Michelangelo Christmas themed one shot. We then come back to issue number 8 with a crossover with Cerebus, and this particular issue is actually quite hard to find. I say hard to find, it's not really all that hard, but it has been admitted from the Omnibus editions that are currently doing the circuit online. So uh, yeah, if you pick up those Omnibus editions of the Mirage Turtles, they likely won't have this issue inside them, and it's got something to do with the copyrights of the character of Cerebus. Anyway, moving along, we have the Donatello one-shot, issue number 9, and Leonardo 1. Now, this Leonardo issue is a very important book in my eyes, as it marks the return of the Shredder, and this story carries on into issue number 10. Issue 11 sees the Turtles escape to the farm, as seen in the 1990s movie, and that's when we then move on to the spin-off title, Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, with issue number 4, the first appearance of the Rat King, in a story called I Monster. Sticking with this spin-off, we jump to issue number 6, the first appearance of Leatherhead, and then jumping back to the main run, we have issues number 19, 20, and 21, which is now known as the classic Return to New York trilogy. Issue 24 begins what would now be known as the guest era of the Mirage run, and this is likely the creepiest story ever to be told by the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise, in a story titled Down by the River, and I will no doubt be making a video on this particular issue soon, so if you haven't already done so, please subscribe so as not to miss out. I then have issues 25, 26 and 27, before making the jump to 46 with the cameo appearance of Space Usagi. Issue 47 then gives us the first full appearance of Space Usagi, and we then jump again to issue number 50 with the beginning of the end with the first part of a story arc titled City at War. I have issue 52, 53 which happens to be the first appearance of Shredder's granddaughter Karai, 55 and finally 56, the first cover appearance of Karai. So yeah, that is my current Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collection when it comes to the original Mirage run, and I've been happy with this for a really long time, but then I saw this for sale online, and I figured, sure, why not? A 9.4 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number 1 from 1984, second print by Mirage Comics. Yes, I know it's only a second print, but I for one am really happy with this, and I'll tell you why. For those of you unaware, the first print of this first appearance book had a print run of approximately 3,000 copies, with a second print of 6,000 copies, and a third of 36,000 copies, meaning that this second print is still very scarce and a rare book in high grade. So why did I buy this book now? Well, 2024 marks the 40th anniversary of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise, and I'm hoping that this might mean that we get a mini tour by both creators. So yeah, to put it simply, I bought this book in anticipation, hoping that both Kevin and Peter might attend a signing event somewhere within the UK, or at least somewhere within Europe that I can get to. Now, should that be the case, what should I do? 
because honestly now holding this in hand I'm unsure of my original plan. My original plan was to crack this open and get both men to sign and possibly sketch upon the book. This of course would be witnessed by a CGC representative and would immediately be sent back across the pond in order to be regraded and slabbed. But then, what would that do to the grade? Looking at the graders notes online there are only 65 of these listed on the census in universal grade. Therefore I have to wonder is it worth the risk of a drop? Or could it even be possible to get a grade bump if cleaned and pressed? After all the notes state the following multiple light fingerprints on the back cover, multiple light fingerprints on the front cover, and spine stress lines that break colour. As well as this, there appears to be a hair trapped within the case, which has since moved during the shipping over to me. At the time of purchasing, looking at the pictures online, I was unsure if this was a colour breaking crease on the book or a scratch on the slab, but now you can clearly see that this is a white hair of some kind. Now granted, nothing can be done about the colour breaking stress lines, but what about those fingerprints on the front and back covers? But then again there is also the worry that something was missed the first time round. Is this book really what it claims to be? I mean mistakes can and do happen, right? What if I crack open this slab and there is something else wrong with it? Something that wasn't picked up on the first time? It's all very stressful, especially with the money involved. But, let's pump the brakes for a minute and let's reassess our options. Option 1. We could leave it as it is and do nothing, choosing instead to get something else signed should the opportunity arise. Option number two, I could potentially crack it open, get it signed, sketched upon, cleaned and pressed and resubmitted and just take the hit regardless of what it might be. Or option three, a weird one I know, get the slab signed, keeping the book inside as it is. But what are your thoughts? What would you guys do? I mean, option two was always my plan, but now I'm wondering if it's worth the risk of the grade drop. Now, fortunately, time is still on my side, as at the time of recording, there have been no announcements made regarding any trips over to the UK and or Europe. And even if they were scheduled to make an appearance, I wouldn't be cracking it open until the day of the event. After all, dropouts can happen and people's plans can change. But all that being said, I really don't know what to do. So please help me out, guys.